Hello and welcome to another video. This time I'm going to talk about this volume uh, th which is a bound copy of a science magazine called Conquest. This will be a hundred years old next October. Um, I'm recording this in December uh, 2021. However, um, I've not just got this bound volume uh, which I've had in my possession for 40 years. I got it from a jumble sale um, back in the day for probably around about 50 pence I can't remember of course uh, and it is absolutely fascinating and we'll ha have a look at that in a second however this is how it ca came in in newsagents before it is bound up in, in that this is an older one from June 1921 so over a hundred years old now unfortunately anybody associated with this is no longer with us um, but this is just fascinating. I had this colour illustrated in front cover, all inside is black and white. In this number, fighting fire with foam, x rain steel, the highest railway in the world, how star distances are measured. So all fascinating stuff and absolutely uh, intriguing to anybody who, who bought the magazine uh, back in the day. Now, of course, in the, in the actual volume, it doesn't have the adverts the adverts no doubt would have been seen as uninteresting to people who wanted the bound volumes at that time but of course now a hundred years later these adverts themselves are absolutely uh, fascinating uh, the micro telescope has even been selected for the mount everest e expedition start again so 12 pounds 12 shillings and you know people who earned about five pounds a week then so that had been really expensive um if you were poor anyway um uh, or £15 and here's one for £30 and what have we got here my electrical workshop a book that's seven shillings and nine pence this magazine incidentally it was uh, is, is one shilling and that is equivalent of around about a bit less than five pounds a day however people had less disposable income if they were working class so only sort of people professional people would would uh, uh, as they called them at the time would, would, would buy this mine training made interesting <laughs> And look, the greatest mountain railway, how trains are taken across the Andes. It's all about the engineering that goes into it, this, um, the tunnel construction, you know, putting up walls to stop falling rocks, and, 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 and so on. And of course, the very high tech train. The engines are so designed that they work either as Iraq or adhesion locomotives. That's to say, where the rack bars are not laid, the cogwheels are free, and the ordinary driving wheels do the work by adhesion on the track rails. It's explaining all how it all works, etc. Fighting fire with foam, they've just discovered that, that water isn't always the best way to put out an oil fire, but, um, but to uh, smother it with foam to stop the oxygen that way, a lot more effective. Bones are what the chemists can do with them. So all interesting stuff, obviously make glue, but um, obviously other things as well. They get from the phosphate and lime and, and so on, which they can use as a fertilizer, of course, as it says, look at this, wireless tele te telephony on the bar light ship, the wireless room, the wireless telephone, the electromotor, driving generator by local supply, a Northwest Tower, look at that high tech radio. If you were a radio amateur in a day and you could uh, score yourself one of them, well, you'd have been, you'd have been the, the top of the radio amateurs, no doubt, at that time. And x-rays and some of their uses. <laughs> you wouldn't have been aware of some of this, but they uh, weren't safety conscious like they do now. When you have your x-rays in the dentist, they go around the corner and uh, so they don't get irradiated. So look at this device. An induction coil outfit with, with mechanical rectifier. Probably the principles are quite similar, but a lot more things. And man's worst enemies. How sleeping sickness is carried. A deadly tetsy fly fighting the mosquito scourge. The, yeah, the common house fly. Trench fever. A war problem. The dangers of all vermin. The main causes of disease. So they're looking into it and fighting it and got sort of pictures and of microscopes and so on. You know, the malarial parasites. Preserves a sleeping sickness, which are carried by tetsy flies. The rat is responsible for spreading the bubonic plague. It certainly was. And parasites that cause sleeping sickness and 
how malignant malaria parasites split up in the blood. So they're learning loads, or explaining loads, from what they've recently learned. And about um, the annual eclipse of April the 8th, the solar eclipse taking place, or partly, probably a full eclipse there, I presume, and then partly elsewhere, uh, Haley's Comet in the, in the Bayeux Tapestry. And this is um, the phases of the, of the annual eclipse in last April, as seen from Tombridge in Kent. I remember a complete solar eclipse, wasn't complete actually, in 1999 I believe, and I was working at Reading train station, and um, yeah, it all went a bit sort of hazy, that was in the summer time, and I think every, Cornwall was where the full eclipse was, but it was cloudy that day, so it was a bit disappointing for all the people that had booked to see it, unfortunately, don't, don't come around in places like Britain very often, folding table, look at that, like a like a pacing table of today, or um, tables folded up in a village hall just yesterday. So, and now the African elephant picks up bread, but in the Indian elephant does it differently. Mr. Page, animals of interest, yeah, like the elephants. So all fascinating stuff on biology, on chemistry, on on you know electronics, although primitive with electronics in here, of course. You know, and also what to do, you know, we stuff around the home, how to, like, ingenious, great, and something that they do with it there. Uh, jelly chemistry, a little brunch, pure science. What's the use? A backwater of research, chemical reactions, how substances behave in jelly, chemical conjuring tricks, what gives agate its rings, gold in quartz, rings in trees. Remarkable effect produced by the reaction of silver nitrate on bitumen of uh, potash in, in a film of gelatine. Pyrites there, it's all to do with fire and so on. Look at this, London's latest telephone exchange. Wow, look at that high-tech telephone exchange. Very few telephone, oh, I'm saying that, and you can't see it. That's a better way of doing it. I'm filming this with some sort of overhead scanner, so <laughs> not my usual thing. Anyway, how far are the stars? The measurement of celestial distances. So they're discovering like parallax or discussing parallax. I'm sure they've already um, uh, uh, discovered it. And also the standard candle and, and so on. I don't know when they actually brought that in or, or um, you know, thought about how, how they can use how dim a star is to measure how far away it is. But they use angles and so on. So here has got the you know the sort of calculations underneath to uh, uh, to do it. So they can work out the distances. Uh, particularly around the solar system, whether they could do it to stars and galaxies by this time. As a fact, Hubble, wasn't it? It was Hubble, and this is before Hubble, this magazine, uh, made it with that new telescope that they had in the 19... Well, it's about the same time, wasn't it, as this? In the very early 20s, anyway, where, um, you know, he worked out the galaxies are moving away, and he and he, he worked out some distances, etc., etc. So, and there's the questions... And answers solutions of readers uh, difficulties. I wish I had time to go through all of this, but you know, people, as scientists or whatever, or the authors with a scientific background answer some of the questions uh, that, are, that are posed by by their readers. The induction and coils and so on, the AC mains at the top there. So all really fascinating stuff. Look at that, 25 shillings for that book, continuous wave wireless telegraphy. That would have been really expensive for a book uh, back in those days. Morse made easy. Thruppence. There you go. That's where amateur radio would sort of start, hadn't it, a few years before. And here, you know, Bovril gives, gives strength. Now, they can't say that anymore. It's against the Trade Description Act. So in those days, they make like make claims to certain foods and everything, like it gives you strength. And I remember, like, even the 70s, a Mars a day helps you work, rest and play. Well, it doesn't. It just gives you loads of sugar. It doesn't necessarily help. However, back to the bound volume. I don't know how much longer it's going to remain bound. If you look, it's getting a bit tatty. It could do with um, an expert on books to sort this out, really. Because um, it is that interesting. It is worth keeping. Look, it's got the whole index of what you want to find. Heavens for the month, so... You know, the astronomy um, uh, details about what you can see in the sky, just like they do today in the astronomy, astronomy magazines. 
everybody's drug aspirin. And aspirin still has lots of uses, probably more so than what they knew about in those days. Electrocuting flies. Anyway, we'll have, we'll have a look through some of it. I mean, it's too long. It'd take too long to, to, to go through all of it. Look, any volume. Three years ago, the first number of conquests was colour cover. Colour cover. How amazing. And this is the fourth volume. So, yes, yeah, so in 1919, it was started just after the First World War then. And making great pains to improve it, etc., etc. And the illustration, look at that. This cinema producer, ever looking for new effects, now utilises great arc lamps to illuminate this his outdoor scenes at night. A photograph taken at midnight by the aid of two sunlight arc lamps showing the mobile lighting set and the way the engine is mounted on the lorry. Note the two maids at the window who are interested spectators. There you go. <laughs> maids. Yeah, no doubt this langu the language in this is well scientific. You wouldn't use it today. You wouldn't use sex sexist terms like maids and you wouldn't use uh, for indigenous peoples, it does say uses words like the savage, you know, outrageously. But of course, this was the height of British imperialism, wasn't it, with its empire in, uh, you know, in Africa and India and all and all, and all the rest of it, um, you know, exploiting the peoples of those countries for their raw materials, manufacturing them in Britain, you know, but getting the raw materials at below world market prices, no doubt, manufacturing them in Britain and selling it back to people at above world market prices. Painting with light. It's it's showing how they use light in paintings and so on. All, all interesting stuff. Book reviews. General astronomy. Physical chemical themes. Look at that. Pictures of strange eggs. Each one of these is fascinating. I wish I had the time to read it all. I've had it for four years. I've read bits and pieces, but you know, never the whole thing. And London's tube improvements. That's before it became London Underground. Extension of the London Underground Railways, see railways, I think it's loaned by different companies then, on which work is now proceeding apace. And it was about London's traffic problem about 100 years ago. Well, they've got congestion charges now and so on in London, um, and uh, it still hasn't solved the problems. So, still an, an ongoing problem, despite all the science. And look. The underground tunnel and you know, big machines do it these days. In those days, you need to go digging it by hand with those machines. The Ingersoll Round pneumatic shovel at work constructing a service shaft at Mornington Crescent on the Hampstead line. I don't think there is a Hampstead line now. I could be wrong. Useful hints for the home. How to sharpen files. Could obtain 12 pennies in exchange from the bottom of the meter. Is that your gas meter or something? Common chameleon. Why do chameleons change colour? So you're discussing all, all of that. Which spout will drip? Or see the science of spouts even. Fascinating stuff. Making the most of your wireless set. How to get the best from a valve receiver. As opposed to a crystal receiver. And uh, here we go. Captain Ian Fraser entertained St Dunstan's blind heroes with his wireless receiver. But it was uh, a fascinating thing back in the day. A bit like like a, seeing it. If you hadn't seen that before, I heard it before rather. A bit like going to see a supercomputer do something today. The second barrier is the high tension supply. So you had like accumulators and whatnot, and you had like high tension. They were dry cells, and you had wet cells, and all this. And you know there was a whole industry uh, grew up around that. While um, pe before people had full electricity in their houses, that you had these radios run off batteries, and you would um, have an accumulator to run them. And you'd have people in, like, even in the village, would like, you know, use do this as a business, and supply, you know, batteries and so on, and wireless notes of the month. And look at that, what a big horn there <laughs> coming out. Scout wireless enthusiasts, listen to the Prince of Wales broadcast speech. How wonderful! The amazing super. Well, it look, look, does actually look in this day, it would have been amazing to see that. Well, many prizes for conquest reasons. Look, five guineas. Two guineas, one guinea. So, experiments in science. This photograph was taken by the radioactive rays from a cold gas mantle. Thorium, it says. Some idea of the complexity of a modern submarine will be gathered from this photograph, which shows the controls of a British vessel. Look at all that, and the dials and whatnot. Very mechanical. 
hints for Guy Fawkes night. There you go, and you know, Scientist Diary, so that'd be interesting to read. Uh, novel ideas of interest and utility. Shopping indicator. What to, What do you want today? You want some barley? Some boot polish? Candles? Some of the stuff we still have today, of course. And then food on the other side. Oh, matches? You know, I haven't bought matches for like years. And the new centrifugal top, which adds many frills to the usual race games. A sharp spin and the top falls on its side. Exhibit in the winning colour together with the odds. Wow. There you go. Make it yourself. And simple inventions. Electric burglar and fire alarm. There you go. And to make the best gaslight prints. And then what you can see in the time of the year. Science by the Christmas fireside. Outside a cold and piercing wind, drifting snow, here and there a glimmer of yellow light amid the blue darkness of late afternoon, inside the warmth and comfort of a happy Christmas gathering, bright lights and gay surroundings, a cheerful fire and all the accomplishments of a happy Christmas. There are some who would say that science by its merciless logic and cold analysis of everything it's something of a killjoy to be kept away from the happy gatherings associated with the festive season. And yet do we always realise what we owe to science in providing the comforts of a happy Christmas. This is true, electric lights and so on, even in those days. The cherry, here you go, the cherry electric light, the incandescent mantle which takes its place in many homes, the electric bell that rings to announce the arrival of welcome guests. There are some of the obvious applicants of science these are some of the obvious applicants of science. Less obvious applications of science. Less obvious are the dyes which give the colours to the dainty lampshades. Long before coloured LEDs then. Cushion covers and other decorations. Your eye can s scarcely rest on an object that has not been originated or at least touched and improved by the scientists. So it goes on and on and on. And of course then get the gramophone. Because if you've got one of them you're a bit well off. Or the new wireless set, just unpacked and gleaming with brass and polished ebonite? Ebony, does that mean? From um, elephant tusks. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Yes, science has contributed much to make our modern Christmas enjoyable. In the future it will probably contribute to a great deal more. It is a tried and faithful servant and the master. Question mark, that is though. Christmas is the festival of, all, of the greatest scientist of all. Uh, really? Okay. And whatever that is. A triumph of scenic reality. London's Motor Bus Hospital. So where they fix the uh, buses. The world's largest repair works. And there you go. And here's some uh, pictures from... The motorworks in London. Whereabouts was it in London? Because that would be of interest, wouldn't it? I wonder what's there today. Covering 31 acres. It's in Chiswick. In which these vehicles are periodically repaired. That's in the west of London. Photographing coins without a camera. Some sort of light box then. Hmm. Example of a coin photography without a camera. The only disadvantage of the method described is that the impressions are reversed. Oh, I see, yeah. What is asbestos? Ha! Huh. Dangerous, that's what asbestos is. And they didn't know then, it gave people lung cancer. And now it's banned and they're pulling down buildings with asbestos in, so in case it affects anybody. Stagecraft Secrets of Drury Lane. So what goes on behind the scenes, behind the curtain and so on. Look at this. Make your own wireless apparatus. Practical hints and tips for the home constructor. Some, some sort of coil winder there. Looks very good. And then, look, make honeycomb calls with this device. And here we go. The Lady Mayoress of Birmingham listening to a wireless appeal on behalf of the Birmingham Hospital Sunday Fund. The Lord Mayor spoke by wireless from the house of a well-known wireless amateur. 
Wow, there you go. Home hints and simple inventions. A rubber shaving brush. Separating contents of an egg, all good stuff. Novel devices of interest and utility. The basin lifter enclosed. How <laughs> is that? Oh, I see, that's how it works when you're making. Is that for your basin lifter in use for your steam pudding or whatever? Of course, they just used what they had around, and there wasn't. It's no plastic. Well, Bakelite was around, wasn't it? Just then, or coming in, that was the only plastic. So it's all metal and wood, and other rubber. Uh, a torch that burns underwater. Massive breakthrough there. So they can then construct things underwater. Weld things, I presume. And then December, of course, we've been through that. So let's have a look what else there is. I did mark some pages here. I don't quite know why, because it's a long time ago. Oh, look at that. Very relevant for today. Battle of the Germans. Vaccination inoculation. I presume these were bacteria, not viruses. I don't think they could uh, um, detect viruses in those days. They knew about them, I think. A, a centrifuge, where they spin all it all round and you know, whatever they do. You know, I'm not a, a biologist. But, you know, grasping with, you know, what they've done today, they've built on this, haven't they? And if it wasn't for what they did then, we wouldn't have the um, treatments. And, of course, it, that's before antibiotics, of course. So if you got seriously infected, the game was up. In a lot of cases, unless your immune system could fight it, I suspect sepsis was much more of a uh, a thing. Home experiments, third prize experiment with a gramophone and violin. Wow. Evolution of the elephant in pre prehistoric history. It was quite modern that uh, that glass. It's got pounds on it and not. I bet there's no metric on it at all, but I could be wrong. So what's the next? Microscope studies by the far side. Novel projector which all can use. Wow, that's what we got here. Is pure milk possible? In those days, you get there was tuberculosis in milk. Um, showing the piece of cloth showing dirt deposited after simple mechanical filtration. Ooh. People used to drink that, so now they they filtered it afterwards. Um, now it's all pasteurised, etc. So to kill off any of the nasty bugs. But yeah, I mean, and tuberculosis was a big, horrible disease then, wasn't it? There was no, not much treatment like there is today, and no inoculation probably like there is today. So all about the dairy industry and, and, and what they do view of Lord Astor's refrigerator and bottling machine. The milk is poured through the wall from the recording room. What's the recording room? It is then bottled and sealed immediately. Radium in, pe in petrified tree trunks. Petrified? They weren't scared, were they? Making watches by the million. New facts about Switzerland's great industry. Look at this stuff. Not your smartwatch. None of that smartwatch rubbish. All mechanical. <laughs> Look at that. Workshop where the movements are tested. That old thing there, that old, big old pendulum. Seen in the factory, every worker specialises in making a certain part of the watch. Look at this. The Conquest Wireless Magnifier. How to add magnifying valves to existing receivers. Wow, to get it to amplify, to get to get your loudspeaker working, or your big horn, or whatever it was you had. I presume they're the, no, they're the buttons, aren't they? The volume and tune, I suspect. Top view of the magnifier showing construction. All details. And look, a schematic of the wiring. Well, that's it, rather than schematic. And that's like what it should look like notes on the conquest receiver so there's your tubes a theoretical diagram of the more advanced for the more advanced student so just follow the wiring pattern here and it'll work or if not you can look at this and all oh, that's how it works all oh, that's a potentiometer coils transformers whatever 
high tension input, another input there. Well, that could be the aerial, of course. Low tension. So what else we got here? Look at this astronomy. Look, a picture of the Great Spiral Nebula Andromeda. Wow. Let's get this in a bit more in focus. This and the other photograph on the right were taken by Ritchie with a two-foot reflector of the Yerkes Observatory, the Great Nebula Orion. Probably didn't quite know then, because it's sort of just pre-Hubble, I believe, that they was heading towards us. What's this? The Conquest of Dust. Talk about vacuum cleaners. Look, they've invented the vacuum cleaner by this time. Probably well invented by this time. Uh, carpet lifted by suction and the, and the beaten by the brush. There you go. Way to clean your home. Save paying the servant to take it outside and beat it with a, a big bat or something. Big bit of wood to get the dust out. Your rug. Got that, mate. Uh, like a, a non electric one where you push the thing down. Probably not very effective. And a cabinet vacuum cleaner. I think there was a like YouTube videos like and they did like lots of household things like the Secret Life of the Vacuum Cleaner and he went through all of these and that was made in the eighties and they and he's reput them on YouTube and remastered some of them as well. So well worth a watch. The Conquest free valve receiver, look at those, look like incandescent light bulbs, they're not obviously, but and that was it. You wouldn't wanna you know the high tension, you wouldn't want to put your fingers on it. There you go. Need more, more more wiring. But they were um they weren't superetrodyne. So they make those whistling noises, they tuned in because they're reactants, weren't they? Big snakes. Some phalluses exposed. What have we got here? Is pure mint possible again? Difficulties and problems of air supply. It's continued, a continued article. So yeah, and it is possible because they've done it. So it, it's, it's happened. All this devices without a cup of tea, pouring the milk with a spout attachment. I don't quite know why I had that highlighted, but the, oh yeah, goes the bread thing here. Remember, a bread knife attachment for picnics. So you can slice it just to the right, to the right of thickness. And Nigeria. And, and it's railways. Look at that modern locomotive there. Logs used as sleepers and whatnot. All good stuff. What we got here? Another single, a single valve magnifier. Well, look at that. Got a big old transformer there, and a potentiometer, and all the connectors, and a big block of wood. And here's how to make it. There you go. You do that, and you do that, and that's your theoretical diagram of how it works. Open other worlds. What's this? A typical modern telescope used by astronomers, by means of which the physical features of their nearer neighbours in the solar system can be carefully examined. The smaller telescopes attached to the main instrument are of low power and are used for general searching and picking up stars. You think what we could do now, like with the Hubble and now with the James Webb, if it gets up in the air, which should be the time of making this video within the next next week, I believe. This is postponed again. Let's hope not. And, it, and it, if it is launched, let's hope it works. So blow up on the launch pad. That would be very disappointing. They hadn't even discovered Pluto at this time, had they? I don't think. And now we sent a space probe there. Absolutely amazing. Well, that was 2015. And that was absolutely amazing. They sent them pictures back. Never been seen before. Even Hubble could only resolve like blurred images of it. Secrets of steel hardening. Well, very important. And here we go, the crystal receiver. So if you couldn't afford all the other stuff, maybe you could you could you could make this. 
and to make a neat, simple and efficient crystal receiver to cover the broadcast wavelength range at a total cost of five or six shillings, exclusive of uh, telephones, in other words, the um, headphones. Indoor aerials, make a, put a bit of wood in that, make a aerial, look, go to your water pipe for your earth, not your gas pipe, or a wire on the floor as to count oppose that one. See, so earth's work for the very, very low frequencies. The high frequencies, they make no difference whatsoever. Just need a dipole gas bracket. I don't think I'd advise that these days, probably because. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we know why, because of fire sparking and so on. First, what high compression? What we've got here? Device of interest in utility. Look at that old typewriter. A typewriter driven by electricity. The latest music typewriter. Wow. And the, none of your word processor junk. And what you can do with your broom handles. And what not. Oh, what else we got here? Insulin. A new factor in treatment of diabetes. Now you think if you got diabetes in those days, it was probably a death sentence. Because they didn't really fully understand it and what it was. And uh, then they discovered they could use pig's insulin. Of course, now it's uh, manufactured synthetically. Um, but what an incredible breakthrough. And like they're talking about here about the patients. So I've read this article in the past. Uh, that made these tremendous recoveries as far as they can see you know and obviously it took off it it, um, it worked you know obviously it's much more tailored now to what was in those days a bit more crude you know even up until even recently you know it's got it's got less and less crude as time time has gone on and more people live for longer without the horrible things like going blind and toes dropping off and and, and whatnot so yeah hundred years ago they were pioneering it all so the, yeah so the, as a science magazine for its day I think it's brilliant good good quality illustrations from photographs color front cover on the actual magazine the senior voice don't forget this is done before television now for your science okay you got your science magazines today which are really really good you know you wouldn't you know this is not for your, you know, plebs, so to speak. Um, the chymograph. Stay again. The chymograph recording the pitch and loudness of the voice, which is used to instruct the deaf and dumb. Deaf and dumb. Not a term we use today. So, yeah. Conquest a valve and crystal receiver. So you've got both combined here. I presume it, it picks up with the crystal the signal and amplifies it with the valve. But I haven't read the article, so I could be wrong. The microbe. Nature Mess Victory. Which should be re repaired and restored. Last survivor of the wonderful uh, wooden ships which fought the early battles of the empire is to be repaired and preserved as a national memorial there you go century of progress we have a century since then of progress an Englishman of the 12th century would have felt quite at home in the 14th century England but what suspended changes uh, at last in manners and knowledge and the material and aspects of civilization. So practiced from the world of even 1823. But that's right, because that's feudalism though in the 12th century, and now we've got capitalism, which has had massive development. Despite it always being unfair, it is it brought about, you know, it, it has exploited all the all the things that we have, you know, aeroplanes, bicycles, cars, VR, you know, um, supercomputers. But it has reached its limits, not in terms of inventions and going forward, but been able to use all those resources it's created to make everybody in the world not poor. Well, it hasn't done that. And now it's sort of like in Britain, it's gone backwards a bit. So rather than invest in new 
new things they see well people are in debt they can't really afford all these new nice things we could produce so instead we'll make money by like i don't know privatizing the national health service and of course decimating it as a service along the way but that's where we are that's my rant An electrical toy the restlessness of a german imp So, the romance of the rail, indeed. I mean, very few people had cars in those days. Railway was the way you got around. I don't know if they still had third, first, second and third class in the 1920s. They certainly did in the century before. Um, and third class was just awful, like in a, like in a truck and standing room only, um, from what I've seen. But, in no doubt, improved as time went on. And real treasure islands of the Pacific. Yeah, let's go out there and steal everything. So yeah, absolutely fascinating book. What goes on inside the telephone and all sorts. So in the time, but 100 years old. I do need to somehow digitise it really and um, preserve it, which I can do with a scanner that I'm filming this on. But it would take a long time. What page are you on now? 391. It would be a massive PDF file, the way the scanner does it. I'll have to find a way of um, compressing the PDF off of these things. are quite easy when you know what you're doing. Um, seal, sea lions and sea serpents. Sea serpents in a science magazine? Science magazine? I don't think so. Double NF, lack supply. The linen. So let's just flick through it to the end now. Icebergs. Yeah, this is the magazine I got, I think, over there. So you got your icebergs, which wasn't long ago the Titanic happened, was it? Learning the icebergs life story. It's all about sales. It studied them. Probably <laughs> after that. Uh, a horrible disaster. Yeah, there's international conference on the safety of life at sea, which met in nineteen thirteen, rise it was unfair. The whole of the burden of the patrol should fall on the United States, and accordingly it was arranged that a patrol manned by, uh, directed by the states and financed by the 40 signatories of the convention should be established to patrol the danger area in the south and east Newfoundland banks. There are lots of pictures of icebergs and what they're looking at. Look, taking 5,000 photographs a second, pioneering stuff. Well, you go to the slow mo guys, and I think even there now they can uh, not their camera with that super camera they got, but they went to a laboratory or somewhere where they actually photograph light moving, the speed of light. It is, you know, it's not just the frames, is it? But it does some trickery to, to show it, which is amazing. They can do that. So, all sort of special effects stuff then from this. We've seen the bullet go for the apple since then, haven't we? But oh, what this is exactly doesn't actually say. Hmm. Inside the planet Saturn. You really like that? Well, we sent Cassini there since. I'm sure we know a lot more than what it says here. How perfumes are made by the late H. Onslow. So he wrote that article and must have died shortly after. The wooden housing in which the rapid cinema machine is kept in order to prevent fogging the films. And then exploiting the workers to get the scent for them. the perfumes. Garden rake, look at that. Um, stop it clogging up. Press that down, all your leaves fall off. Wireless on, on the motor car by Captain C.C.J. Frost of the British Broadcasting Company. Only the best. And look at all that wireless equipment under there. There's <laughs> loads of it. Just to get an AM signal. But look, that's quite high tech, that. Tuning panel. It's open showing tuning condenser four way adapter and log, and log net type phone for the use of lady occupants. Wireless reception equipment for all small cars has also bought to a, is bought to a state efficiency. 
In the BSA car shown here, the portable aerial is carried on a small reel and is thrown over a conventional bow wire when in use. And then some more your wireless notes. Rhinoceros's study of them. Dust is precious. Look at that. It won the photograph competition. A snake in Ealing Forest. Epping Forest, sorry. Second prize photo of a child's skull. Mm, a grim. Consolation prize of yeast sales. I thought that would have been the most fascinating thing. Times 1,500. Wow. And now they can get down to atoms, can't they, with um, electron scanning. Flying underwater, a penguin caught in the act. Wow. That never been seen before, I doubt, by many people. And there's a couple more here. Three books on wireless. Man may, li may outlive the world. <laughs> uh, a way around now. The world, uh, the world will live, yeah, but for another half a billion years or whatever. But whether people will carry on, it talks about snow and Christmas near somewhere. Whereas, of course, um, the winters here in southern England have been really mild for the past few years. I mean, you know, today, I remember it when it'd been much colder than this. Okay, there's been mild times as well. But it's like 10 degrees a day. You can just walk around without a jacket on even. Modern sweet making. Secrets of the big toffee factory. Woo. And head coverings out then. So it wasn't all. A little bit of health and safety involved. So yeah. What's this? Everybody's drug. What's everybody's drug? Aspirin. Aspirin, or as a chemist knows it, and it's, going to, it's a scientific name that I can't pronounce, the most popular remedy of the day. Eric explains what it is and what it, and what its virtues consist of, not omitting a word of warning to those who regard it as a remedy for all ills. Very true. Is a chemical formula there. For it all, so they had an idea. Rest of it, selecting a wireless receiver points to be observed by F. H. Haynes. He wrote a lot of wireless stuff, I believe, back in the day. Typical crystal receiver, a two valve receiver making use of high frequency amplification. A multi valve high frequency amplifier designed for use with a frame aerial. Look at him. A receiver designed for simple manipulation fitted with an interchangeable plug-in tuning coils extending the wavelength range to, uh, to permit of the reception of continental t telephony to get your stations from abroad. Fur coats. That wouldn't be allowed today, would it? Animals which you would sense measuring the, the dirt we breathe. Oh, they were measuring it then. See, they knew about these things. I started to know about them then. Yeah, we continued polluting the air with diesel fumes. Like they knew about electric cars. They could have gone on to develop them, but oil becomes so cheap and more profitable. So that's the way it went. And then now, of course, it's turning into its opposite. Seven, a salmon attempting to leap up a waterfall. That did win the photographic competition. I should think so. Really, it must have been quite an achievement to get that in those days. Consolation prize, a floral cuckoo clock. Oh, that's quite an achievement, I suppose. How perfumes are made. Handy cheap form of calculator, already Regner, which anyone can work. Yeah, I've seen them before. Treasures from the Desert. A review of a fascinating new book by the editor. So yeah, really good stuff in this. Absolutely fascinating. I don't know when it was discontinued. Um, if anybody does know, leave it in the comments. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is a really fascinating book. 
and uh, I will get around to digitising it. And who knows? I won't, won't make it available. So yeah, we've been through all this, haven't we? It seems to stop at every page I've been to. Collect mail bags, so people had letters and whatnot. Anyway, it's not showing you very much if I do it like that, is it? Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. But I'm, um, I hope you liked this video of this very old uh, volume of Conquest, the science magazine, which the magazine of popular science, monthly at one shilling net. And so it's set on September 23. However, when it's not long after it started, a couple of years after it started, the British magazine of popular science, one shilling net. There you go. I'll leave that there.